Shine.fm presents Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Here's Seth Tower Heard. Stronger Together, it's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. My name is Seth Tower Heard. Talking about a movie coming out here in a couple of weeks uh, called An Interview with God. And I didn't honestly know based on the title. I was like, uh, okay, I'll watch it. Maybe it's something we want to do, but I, I really might hate this. <laughs> I was very surprised. This really is the year of Christian movies, like, kind of crossing over um harrison powell joins me who is a uh, a producer of the film and before we actually get into yours i do think it's worth taking one minute to note uh that the big difference in 2018 as opposed to before is christian movies are just making money uh you know most people don't realize that uh the um the mercy Moon movie which is escaping me which i really should know oh i can only imagine you know that made 50 million dollars which isn't crazy money in movie world however it was produced on a very cheap budget and if you compare that to, uh, you know, like um, A Wrinkle in Time, which made $100 million and cost $100 million to make, uh, Christian movies are actually tracking better than secular movies in some ways right now. And uh, it's because there really has been a notable jump in quality. And I, I would put your project right in there. Uh, this is something that I think that uh, the Shine Data Home audience, it's only going to be in theaters for three days. If you get there, I think you'll really enjoy it. And I was not expecting to enjoy it, or I didn't know if I was going to like it. So give me the dates it's in theaters and kind of how this, this came about. Yeah, yeah. So this will, uh, an interview with God will be in theaters August 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Uh, we'll be on uh, about 800 and 900 screens across the nation. Okay. Um, yeah. And so this film, um, so this script came our way about two and a half years ago. And uh, our mission is to find great stories that first and foremost entertain and engage people. And um, through that, it sparks a conversation around faith. Yeah. And so when we read that, it we kept turning the page because we wanted to know what would happen. And we just thought that the script was exactly in line with uh, with our mission. You know, that that was what was the most surprising about this movie. The setup is that it's a journalist that goes and interviews this guy and this guy claims to be God. And I was like, oh, oh, boy, I know where this is going to go. <laughs> yeah. And it uh, the movie is so refreshing because at no point did I guess the end. I mean, I think in most Christian films I've ever seen, it's like, OK, I think this was a noble effort. I think some Christians are going to like it. But. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm also a film critic uh, and writer with uh, Relevant Magazine and some other publications. And, uh, you know, I, at no point did I want to go write about any of those. And this really does stand alone as a as a movie movie. Um, Thank yeah. You. Thank you. I really appreciate that. The mission accomplished then. <laughs> you know, it, it is a heavy film. And most of the time it's like, you know, there's a Christian movie out. Um, you know, it's like, oh, we'll take your kids. You know, everybody's going to enjoy it. And I don't want to say don't take your kids because I don't think that's I mean, there's no objectionable content here. This is a a movie that is great and you do have to pay attention to it. It's not like I feel like most Christian films. I could walk out, get more popcorn, refill my soda go to the bathroom, walk in 15 minutes later and I would be fine because I know where it's going. And yeah. you, I yeah. mean, this, this probably is going to be lost on anybody yeah, younger than, told, uh, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably gonna be lost in anybody younger than like yeah. eight or nine years old. Probably. Right. It's pretty heady, I guess I would say. Yeah. It's, it's intellectual. It definitely, it deals with it, it. The whole idea is if you could ask God any question, what would it be? And over the course of three interviews, several of those questions are put on the table and explored. Yeah. Um, so tell me how we got to this very, uh, what could have been a bad movie being a very good movie. So, the, you know, just the question of, you know, because what you could have wound up is a movie that are like those well-intentioned, but really cheesy coffee cups that people usually don't want to get as gifts where it's like, they just have a little saying about God's plan on them or something. And you're like, okay, <laughs> thanks. <Yeah. laughs> I think it, it's all about the team. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. Um, uh, ever since uh, I've been in the film industry, you, you look at the end credits a lot differently now just because of the sheer amount of people it takes to get a project off, off the ground and made with excellence. And um, to use a, an analogy, my wife um, used to be in the coffee business. Uh, she would manage supply chains from coffee farms to cups. And her whole thought was a, a co you can only – your cup of coffee is only as good as the bean you start with. Yeah. It can only get worse. And so um, 
So I think it, it all starts with the story and the writing. Um, and then unfortunately, it, most projects are not most, but many projects can get uh, low. They're, the quality of the, the, the story, the quality of the film uh, degrades as they add certain directors or certain cast or certain costume designer, designers. So we really supported this thing with a great team from our director, Perry Lang, to uh, the cast that's in it, um, to our entire production uh, team that um, was with us when we shot it up in uh, New York. Yeah, and, you know, this question of, you know, basically the the film grapples pretty heavily with uh, this question of why do bad things happen to good people? Uh, you know, why is this yeah. thing happening to me? And more particular with one of the central characters, it's like, why, you know, why is this thing happening to me? I, I don't want to face it. Uh, you know, the, I've been banned from giving any spoilers and I wouldn't want to ruin the movie for anybody. Uh, but that really is what drives this. And that's what I think. Uh, maybe this is something that you could invite, you know, another couple or a non-believing friend to go to and they would find it pretty interesting uh, as to where you know a lot of Christian movies, uh, I don't even want to be there, and I love Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, in my opinion, and you have great art behind you. Uh, I think yeah. art should ask great questions, not necessarily give the answers. I, actually, because this is on the radio, and you know, on video, if you're if you're just listening on the radio, there's a, a very ornate ornate like abstract landscape painting behind me. So yes, yes. <laughs> and it should, it, so it should invite audiences in to ask questions. And unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but certain films will give the answers, and and you leave not asking questions. And so at the end of this film, if, if audience members can leave, um, you know, asking questions and more importantly, I think comfortable asking questions, um, you know, that would be a job well done for us. I think most, most, um, including myself, many people feel that certain questions are off limits or they should have the answers already, or, um, people just don't want to deal with ambiguity. And so, uh, we hope that this film is a, is an encouragement for people to start putting those questions on the table and exploring it themselves, but exploring it with other people as well. This is Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. The uh, The movie is an interview with God. I was really surprised at how good this thing is. Uh, coming out in theaters, you've, you're only going to be able to see it in theaters for three days. What's, what's that like? What did you say again? August 20th, 21st? August 20th. 21st and 22nd. Yep. Okay. So either you see it then or you're going to have to wait till it comes out on DVD. How movies like this do in the theater really does matter on how many more movies like this are in your local theater. Uh, so that's something you definitely want to keep in mind, whether you're going to see it uh, at the theater or at home. And I know if you got kids, it can be harder to get to a movie, but this might be one that uh, you might want to seriously consider prioritizing. So as we dive a little bit deeper into you know, how a really good Christian movie gets made. The main characters here actually have all done big stuff before. So this isn't just uh, kind of, you know, somebody's friend or, you know, there's been some halfway decent movies that have been made because a church got behind it or something like that. Uh, and these three, the three main actors have been in a bunch of other stuff. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So we have um, just a terrific lineup of cast. Um, David um, Strathairn, he's an Academy Award uh, nominee uh, for Good Night, Good Luck. Um, he was in um, uh, se several films, um, including the Born Identity um, films, L.A. Confidential, um, River Wilds. So he's just an actor's actor. He's terrific. Um, Brenton Thwaites, who plays the journalist, he was most recently in um, the um, – the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. He was in The Giver. He was in Maleficent. Um, Hill Harper. Um, he's been on um, several TV shows, including CSI. Um, and then we have Yael Groglis. She was in uh, Jane the Virgin. And um, all of them just brought so much to the table, especially um, since most of it is an interview. It's called An Interview with God. It was amazing to watch Brenton Waits and David Strathairn act across one another. Um, most of these interviews are anywhere from 15 to 25 pages of a script, which means that's about 15 to 25 minutes on the screen. And they did these interviews without cutting, meaning we didn't, we didn't stop. And so they just knocked it out of the park in terms of kind of a tennis match uh, back and forth during these interviews. We were very happy because that makes your production schedule lighter and therefore your budget uh, lower. Um, so they did a wonderful job in terms of just really nailing those interviews. So, 
Uh, tell me about the the cast there. What you know? I'm guessing that not every single cast member um, you know has faith in Christ. So what drew them to this? Uh, yes, that that's true. Um, I think the script. Um, it, it's interesting. A script not only needs to sell a director and a producer, but it's got to sell the cast and get them excited. And so they got excited about the script, um, just how it was set up, the opportunity for this great interaction during these interviews. Um, and also the team, Perry Lang, uh, was a terrific, is a terrific director. Um, he's also an actor as well, but he's, um, been involved in, um, several different, um, TV shows going way back to NYPD Blue on ER and NCIS. And so I think they were attracted to the project because of that, the story, the script, it did not feel, uh, like a typical faith film, uh, was not a as in your face as 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 certain uh, films might be so they weren't necessarily uh, repelled by that or, or concerned by that um they thought it was just a great opportunity to 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 play these roles and to be directed by uh perry lane this is stronger together it's a show about growing in marriage parenting relationship and community uh harrison powell joins me the movie is an interview with god it's going to be in theaters for three days only uh august 20th to the 22nd and normally uh you know i mean shine dad fm's broadcasting in you know areas where there's usually pretty big movie theaters so probably almost everybody's going to have a chance to see this but you only have three days to actually check it out um so i i do want to talk a little bit about the uh decisions of christian moviegoers uh because i i started out this interview by saying there's a lot of christian movies i don't like and even down to uh, there's a couple christian movies that friends worked on I wanted to support but not see, so I would buy a ticket to that movie and just walk into another theater. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> so I don't know that maybe a lot of people who just check out movies and like movies realize that just how important like the actual theatrical run is, because I think there's a lot of times this question of like, oh, well, you know. Uh, and, and not saying obviously you can get out and see every movie in theaters. So my wife and I are before our first baby's born in October because we're not going to see a movie for quite some time. Um, but why is the theatrical run and particularly the you know the opening night, opening weekend so important? Yeah, that that's a great question. So um, you know a theater uh, is a business and their screens are real estate. So if if a certain uh, screen is selling a lot of seats, that's selling a lot of popcorn and uh, and, and products they will want to keep the film around the next week because more and more people will come. Um, so opening weekend is really big for your theatrical run because if you have a strong opening weekend, the chance, chances are theaters want to keep you around and other theaters want to add you. Um, on top of that, um, how you do in the theaters typically influences how you do on your home entertainment. So your uh, DVD, your streaming, um, any of those deals, uh, they look to see your performance domestically. And then your international sales as well look to see how you do um, in the theaters. Um, so I'll add actually, we're set up in an interesting way where um, one of the reasons we started this company was to not only tell entertaining stories that spark conversation, but we wanna make as much profit as we can and give it all away. Um, so our funder grew up in foster care in Atlanta and um, because of that he has a strong heart for underserved children. So all of our profits are given back to foster care um, and orphan care, so uh, it's a great mission. And you know, with that, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make a product profit to be able to give away, you know, your money. So, uh, going into the theaters and encouraging audiences to go into the theaters has a has a big impact on that. Holy cow! I, well, I, I saw in the beginning of the movie it was, uh, you know, that the, you're giving the profits away. I didn't realize that's where it came from. So, yeah. Somebody yeah. who's been successful that said, I want to make movies and I want to ho help foster kids. Yes, it's uh, a, a great person to work with, um, our, our, our funder. He's, he's terrific. Okay, holy cow. Talking about the movie and interview with God. By the way, if you missed any part of this conversation, you can grab uh, the video on Facebook or YouTube or search Shine.fm podcasts to grab the, the full conversation there. Harrison Powell joins me. Um, just as we're, uh, you know, we're kind of winding down our, our uh, conversation here. 
Christians do want more movies that are good, <laughs> that are faith based yeah. <laughs> to be made. Right. And a lot of times there is that thing of like, oh, well, something comes along once in a while and I try to go th- see it in the theater uh, and, you know, maybe, you know, pick up a copy in DVD or Blu-ray. What el- what other factors does the audience actually have on what gets made? And some I would actually maybe ask a question too: what kind of secular movies that Christians see that actually might l- lend movie studios towards making more faith based content? Hmm. That's, um, well, it, it's, so it, it's interesting. Um, cause we, we have this discussion a lot, uh, in, and so, um, which is a, a question like what, what makes a faith film a faith film? Um, some people say the matrix is a terrific faith film, uh, or the Narnia series while others say, you know, a, a certain type of film has to have a Bible verse to be a faith film. Um, but I think, Overall, um, Hollywood is noticing that movies that um, contain certain values, um, contain certain ideas, um, are getting noticed. And so, you know, if there are certain films that that you see that celebrate, um, you know, things that Christ would celebrate, I think going to that, uh, Hollywood inevitably is noticing. And it's a really tough time right now in, 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 in Hollywood, and we're feeling it as well. There's just so much content out there, it's difficult to get above the noise. And so if, if, if um, you know, if Hollywood or if, if, if filmmakers notice that certain groups of people are attracted to certain type of films, they're inevitably going to try to make more films like that. You know, and we, I think to really drive that point home, we have to look back at um, a craze that's now over the vampire craze, <laughs> like where every movie had a vampire in it for about five years. Absolutely. <laughs> and so Hollywood went insane with saying, put vampire movies out there because people kept showing up for them. And eventually, I mean, you know, with how, how many different ways can you see a story about a vampire? Like they, you know, want to drink blood, the end, uh, you know, however, with, with faith-based content or with uh, more intelligent, you know, kind of values-based content like that can keep going. And so it also really is the movies that you select that are not explicitly Christian films. It's what, you know, every time that you buy a ticket to the theater or even rent something or buy, you know, buy a disc, you're voting, right? You're voting with what gets made. And so that's just something to be thinking about regularly is, you know, if Christians want to see better movies made, period, um, then go to the good ones and skip the bad ones, as opposed to just dropping out of the system, which is going to give the quote unquote votes to people who may, you know, want to see content that, uh, that Jesus is not, uh, down with at all. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. This is a great way to put it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Harrison Powell, the movie is an interview with God. Just as we land the plane here, uh, you know, August 20th through the 22nd. Can you tell me a little bit about just the last question here? How did you personally, you know, get involved in this or how, how did you kind of land in this world? Because a lot of times, you know, people love seeing seeing a movie and then knowing the story behind it. Yeah, well, that's a great. So um, uh, my background is not in films. Um, my background is in venture capital. Uh, startups. I love startups. I love figuring out how you take an idea and you turn it into something valuable and enjoyable for people. So about four years ago, I met the funder. Um, he was interested. He invested in about 20 films passively at the time, and he wanted to get more involved, more hands-on with this idea of um, turning a profit and um, giving the profits away. And what we've seen is roughly 90% of movies um, in general don't make a profit. And so I thought that was a terrific challenge. How do we figure out a model? How do we figure out a business that um, we can beat that batting average and not only tell inspirational stories, but give the profits away? So it's something um, very fun to wake up to each day. Um, We're a small tadpole in a large ocean and we keep learning every day. Um, but it's it's a fun challenge and, and really a fun opportunity. And once again, the movie is an interview with God. If you want to see it in theaters, you got August 20th through 22nd. It's um, it's an all likelihood plan pretty close to your house. Uh, however, you only got three days, so you can't really sleep <laughs> on this thing. Uh, let me do. Just, let me just ask you about the future here. So yeah. is there going to be, uh, you know, assuming this thing works, you, you guys talked about, you know, Christian movies that explicitly give away all their money. Uh we're hoping to see this again. It's kind of a question mark based on how this does. What, what's the future of this thing? 
No, uh, so this is, uh, we've, we've, we've funded films in the past, so this is, uh, and been involved with several films in the past, so this, uh, we continue to make films, continue to learn. Right now, I'm actually looking for, um, actually great comedies. I think uh, there's not enough uh, comedies out there, um, uh, and I think comedy is a great way to drive home maybe some tough things or tough questions that people tend to not want to deal with, but if you do it in a comedic way, people let their guard down. So it's a great conduit for truth and a great conduit for conversation. So uh, we got a couple of comedy ideas we're working on right now. So should have those uh, up and ready uh, uh, soon. Once again, the movie is an interview with God. You got three days to see this thing in theaters coming up August 20th through the 22nd. Hey, if you're listening to this on the radio you and you miss any part of this conversation, you can always go back and grab it. Uh, you can search Shine.fm on Facebook or YouTube to see the video in its entirety or search Shine.fm podcast wherever you subscribe to audio and you can get the whole thing there. This is Stronger Together. It's Shine.fm. That was Stronger Together a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Subscribe to the Shine.fm podcast to catch every episode of Stronger Together, available on the iTunes podcast app and wherever podcasts are available.